Hello, in this video, I'm going over management groups, policies, and blueprints in Microsoft Azure. Hello everyone, my head is still swimming from all the information at Microsoft Ignite this year. In this post, I'm going over three reoccurring topics from Ignite that makes managing and compliance of an Azure environment much easier. These are management groups, policies, and blueprints. So let's get started with management groups. But before I do that, let's go back to what used to be the highest level of scoping for management in Azure. That was the subscription. At the time, the highest level you could apply role-based access control and other settings was at the subscription level. If an organization had multiple subscriptions for, let's say, development, production, maybe different business units, uh, each subscription would need to have settings applied independently. This could become an error-prone and cumbersome process. Management groups solve this issue by allowing you to create a management group tree up to six layers deep to hold subscriptions. Each group or subscription will inherit settings from the management group above unless that inheritance is blocked. A single directory can contain up to 10,000 management groups. This gives flexibility in how subscriptions are managed and settings are applied. Before I go on to policies, I just want to take a second to ask everyone, if you're enjoying these videos, hit subscribe, and don't forget to, you can also follow me on Twitter. Policies are the next step to simplifying Azure management and adds compliance and enforcement to your Azure implementation. Azure policies allow you to create management policies and apply them to your resources. It runs an evaluation against those resources and can report or correct deviations. It can also prevent implementations or resources outside of what's allowed by the policy. For example, let's say you have a subscription where no one should be allowed to deploy oversized, really expensive VMs. You can create a policy that defines the size of VMs that are allowed. As another example, you can also set a policy that prevents resource deployments outside of specified regions. Policies can be applied to management groups, subscriptions, or resource groups. They can be implemented to audit as well as enforce the settings. Policies also inherit from the parent subscription or management group. A collection of policies like the VM size and allowed regions I mentioned before is referred to as an initiative definition. This gives administrators a lot of flexibility in creating and applying multiple policies uh, into one initiative definition. The last item is blueprints. Some organizations may need to quickly set up new environments in a reproducible way that conforms to the company's standards and requirements. Policies provide part of the solution by setting a framework of rules that affect the resources. Templates also help with repeatable deploying resources in a declarative way to an environment. Blueprints combine ARM templates and policies along with role assignments to create one declarative blueprint for a complete environment setup. A blueprint brings together these different artifacts to compose one package that can deploy an entire environment in a single operation. Not only can blueprints help with deployment, they can also prevent configuration drift in a way templates alone can't. For example, let's say you deploy a VM with a template. A couple weeks later, somebody adds a couple data disks to that VM. There's no way for the change to be represented by the deployment template because that template does not exist natively within Azure. Blueprints change this by tracking the environment in relationship with the deployment template artifact, creating a native connection between what was declared and what actually exists. The best part about this, it's all free as part of your Azure subscription. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, please take a second again to like and you can follow me on Twitter. Thanks.